Hey, what's up guys? Coach Bobby here with Ultimate Muscle Confusion. Welcome back to my video series. As always, here to bring you motivation, inspiration, fitness, and nutrition tips. All right, guys, in today's topic, I'm gonna to talk to you about the same three topics that I'm often asked to present to young athletes. Now, when I have a new group of kids to work with uh, for sports training or just to come speak to them, I always give them what I believe are the three lessons that I've learned throughout my sports experiences, right, from playing sports to following sports to now training and coaching for, coaching for sports. The three lessons that I've learned that I believe uh, are the foundation of what has made me successful in every part of my life, not just sports, but in school, in business, in, in being part of a family, uh, and being a role model in my community. I believe these three lessons have been, have been the foundation of what has made me successful in everything I do. All right, so I'm going to give you the three lessons. So number one, I always tell kids to be very conscious of their brand. Right. And just like we, we we do with McDonald's and and Porsche and Gatorade and Kmart and Macy's, I'm just naming random brands here. Every brand name comes with it a a thought process, an idea, uh, a whole list of assumptions, um, good and bad that that brand has built up over time. You know, usually from the standpoint of companies via millions and billions of dollars. And so I tell these kids and I'm telling you guys that that is no different than personal brands. Right. So our personal brands have the same ability to carry with them the same list of assumptions and preconceived notions and biases uh, that brands of products and companies do. So when you see uh, Jane, or when you see Bobby, or when you see Christopher, or when you see Maria, you have an idea, a thought, a an assumption uh, that has been developed over time uh, via interactions, via hearsay, via room, whatever it is, via visual appearances that is no different than how you feel when you see uh, a Porsche or you see a, uh, a Lexus or you see Macy's or Kmart or Nike or whatever it is. So our personal brands have the same ability to, to have emotions that come from them. And so... Uh, it's important from a fitness standpoint and a health standpoint to understand that how we look is directly related to what our brand is, right? So you can be smart, you can be talented, you can be kind, but the packaging of all that is how you look, right? And, and, and that and how you look is a direct result of how you feel about how you look. Right. And vice versa. How you, how you feel about how you look is a result of how you look. So I know it sounds circular and it is in some ways. But the point is that we train and, and work out and eat healthy for a lot of reasons. Right. To look good, to feel good, uh, to be healthy, to be strong, to impress people. But at the forefront of that should be the fact that people look at you and judge you uh, in a lot of ways by how you look. And, and whether that's important to you is, is, is irrelevant because people judge you based on that. And so know and be conscious of the fact that how you look is going to um, induce feelings from people um, about who you are as a person, right? About how lazy you are or not lazy you are about where you come from about what's important to you right all those things so i'm just saying be conscious because if you are under the notion that people don't judge you based on that uh obviously you're not even wrong because people do and so when i leave the house i'm, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that i'm presenting to the world a an image of what bobby is Right. And part of that image is the personal brand of somebody who cares about fitness, who cares about being a role model to people around them and cares about putting his best, the best version of himself forward. 
right? So number one, uh, be conscious of your personal brand. That's the first lesson. Number two, uh, and people have always heard me say this, is that every day you're working towards something, right? Every day you're, you're trying to get better. You're trying to improve upon areas of your life, not just fitness, but everything, being a better person, being a better speaker, being uh, better read, uh, more learned, um, whatever it is, you're trying to get better um, every day of your life, right? And so I've, I've taught my children um, the, the mantra that every day we're getting ready for opportunity, Right, and the saying goes that uh, when opportunity knocks and we can all fill in the blank, be ready or whatever or whatever it is, and and I've taken that that saying to to another level, and I kind of put a twist on it that that my kids understand and the people I train understand is that when opportunity knocks, have your bags packed. Right, and I, and I normally add some color to it. When when opportunity knocks, have your damn bags packed and ready to go, because he or she ain't coming back and waiting for you to go pack. Right. So the analogy is 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 somewhat funny, but it makes sense to me. Every day you're packing bags, right? You get getting your bags ready. You're putting it by the door so that when opportunity knocks, click click click, right? Knock knock knock. You don't have to say, wait, hold on a minute. I'm going to go upstairs and, and, and get my bags ready. Uh, hold on. Because opportunity is not waiting. It'll go to the next house whose doors, I mean, whose bags are packed. And so it's important to understand that you might not know when, it, when it's coming. You might not know what it's going to look like. But every day you're getting ready for something. Right. And you don't want to be that person who when the time comes, you're not ready. And so back to fitness, right? Back to fitness and back to health. Every day you're training. Sure, maybe you don't want to get into that two-piece bikini. Maybe you don't care if you can bench press, you know, 225 pounds like the next guy in the gym can do. Maybe you don't care if you have 18-inch biceps. Maybe all those things that the guys next to you at the gym or the guys on television want you to believe you should have, maybe those things don't motivate or inspire you. But there is something in this life that you want bad enough that having the confidence that being fit gives you will make you ready when the opportunity comes. Right? Maybe it's a meeting with your boss about a promotion. Well, if you feel more confident because you've been exercising right, and you walk out the, out the door every day feeling good about yourself, not only how you look, but the fact that you've taken ownership of your health, that gives you a, a, a confidence that allows you to say, you know what, I'm going to ask him for a raise or ask her for a promotion. Right. Maybe you're, you're younger and you're still dating and, and that person finally sits next to you. Right. And, and it's the one chance you have to to talk to that person. Well, if you're not confident, if you haven't done the things that make you feel good about yourself these last six months or 12 months or three weeks, whatever it is, then you won't be ready. And that opportunity might not come back. So every day you're getting up in the morning and you're and you're going for a run or you're going for a workout or you're eating uh, that salad uh, rather than have a hamburger with fries. You're packing your bags, getting ready for an opportunity that is coming. I promise you it's coming again. We don't know when we might not even know what, but we're getting ready for it. So when it comes and we and we notice it, we're ready for it. All right. So number one, our brand is important. Protect it, build it, take care of it. Right. Number two, every day we're packing bags. My son even knows it. I tell him when we're training and he's tired and he's bending over and he wants to throw up or he wants to quit. I say, son, what are we doing? What are we doing? And what he says to me is we're packing bags, dad. We're packing bags. Right. So he knows it. Right. My daughter's coming on board, too. She knows it. Right. People who have embraced uh, the UMC philosophy about just getting better every day. They know it. Right. Every day we're getting ready for something big, something big coming. Right. And we won't be left behind when it shows up and not be ready. All right. So, number one, take care of your brand. Right. Build your brand. Number two, pack your bags every day. Every day packing your bags, getting ready to go so that when the opportunity knocks, your shit's ready to go. 
all right? And then lastly, and this might be one of the most important parts of, of what I try to teach people because I am still learning this, this valuable lesson every day. So even when you protect your brand, even when you understand that what you do uh, reflects upon you personally and you're doing things right uh, and you're eating healthy and you're doing your homework and you're being respectful and you're learning and you're growing every day, even when you do all those things right, right? And even when you pack your bags every day, even when you get up in the morning and you train and you eat healthy and, you, and you're reading about how to do things right, um, and you're doing everything right, all your X's and, and O's are lined up, all your, all your T's are crossed, all your I's are dotted, even when you do all the things right, things are still gonna go wrong, right? Bad stuff is still gonna happen to you, right? It's inevitable, right? Um, things happen, people die, you lose jobs, you know, you get laid off, you, you, know, you get flat tires, you get, you know, uh, injuries that prevent you from working out. You, you, whatever it is, things get in the way, things happen to, to make the journey more wavy than straight, right? And so the third lesson I, I, I teach people, and again, I'm still learning this lesson myself, is that all of the ups and the downs, all of the side bends and the straightaways, it's all necessary. It's all important. In fact, there's a, a term in baseball that I believe speaks directly to what this, uh, this acceptance is all about. And it's called the fallacy of the predetermined outcome. Right, the fallacy of the predetermined outcome. And in terms of, of, of baseball, what it means is this. There's a guy at the plate, right, and he's, and, he, and he's battling the pitcher. He's battling the pitcher. There's a guy on first base who's threatening to steal second, right? He's back and forth. The pitcher's looking over. The batter's battling the pitcher. And so, so it's a three-pronged um, scenario going on. The pitcher is, is trying to keep the runner on first and trying to battle against the batter, right? The batter is trying to do what he can to move the runner, to get a base hit uh, while he battles the pitcher. So, so it, it's, it's a it's a interesting uh, conflict and dynamic amongst three partners or three bodies, right? So all of a sudden, the person on first base tries to steal second base, right? And gets thrown out, right? So now he's out of the game, okay? The very next pitch, what happens? We all know the story, right? The very next pitch, the batter hits a home run, right? And so what do people, laymen, say about that situation, right? The person stole, tried to steal second, got thrown out. The hitter, the very next pitch, hits a home run. So the layman, the sports layman, the baseball um, novice, always says that what should have been, what could have been, what if the person had not tried to steal second base and got thrown out? Well, naturally, there would have been a two-run homer, right? So instead of one run coming in, right, if he had not gotten thrown out, there would be two people coming in, right? So what's wrong with that situation, that, that, um, that fallacy? Right, that hypothetical. What's wrong with that? Well, even though we don't always think this way, the truth of the matter is, you can't assume that had the person not stole or tried to steal second base, that the the the, the future after that would have still been the same. We can't assume that had he not gotten thrown out, that the very next pitch would have still been a home run. And that's why it's called the fallacy of the predetermined outcome, because we are predetermining an outcome irrelevant of what happens. And so we all know when we think about it that that's not the case, because had the person still been on first base, the pitch sequence is different. The batter stress level is different. The, everything is different. Right. So to assume that even giving a completely different situation the same outcome would have occurred is absurd, right? So the same is true in our lives, right? And I relate that to a personal story about me growing up. So I grew up uh, with a stutter, which, which then 
turn into what's called cluttering where you talk really, really fast. And do I still have problems with that, both of those? Yes, I still stutter at times. I still clutter oftentimes, right? And so much of my life uh, was a battle against public speaking uh, out of fear of this, of this, of this detriment to what I believe was 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 my qualities, right? It's one of the things on, on, on my balance sheet that was definitely, in my opinion, on the liability side. So I would, you know, I would drop classes that had a public speaking uh, uh, element to it, you know, oral reports. I would drop those. Um, the point is, much of my life, I, I I felt like and thought to myself, well, had I not had this problem, look where I'd be in life. Had I not had this fear of speaking, look how far I'd be in life. And just like the baseball scenario, that's a complete crock of crap because I can't assume I would have still been who I am today if, if I had changed that part of me, right? Maybe I trained as hard as I trained because to me, that was my outlet of being successful, right? Maybe I began to write well because I didn't feel I could speak uh well enough to get my voice out, right? Maybe everything else that, that is good in my life was at least in part because that part of me wasn't good in my life, right? Does that make sense? So my, my point of all this is that everything we go through in life is not only um, overcomable, right? But it's necessary. Right. Not only can we overcome bad things in our lives, but I think I really believe this, that to achieve success in our lives, we need those things. We need those those uh, those downs to create the highs right in our lives. So that lesson, I believe, is the most valuable because there's going to be times when you struggle, when when you don't lose the weight fast enough, when you don't gain the muscle fast enough, and whatever it is, doesn't happen fast enough. But I believe that that is a necessary part of the journey so that when you achieve what you want to achieve, it's because of that, not in spite of it, right? Not in spite of it. So those are the three lessons that I, that I try to really give the people um, when I speak to them. It's number one, protect your brand, right? Take care of your brand, of who you are, of what you want to be in life. Number two, every day we're packing bags, getting ready, right? And know that. Is it hard? Yes. Uh, is it worth it? Absolutely. So every day you're packing bags, know that this, this pain you're going through is getting you ready for something, something great. And number three, even when all that stuff is going right, something's going to happen, right? Something bad's going to happen, right? But when it does, embrace it and know deep down that it's necessary, it's part of the grand scheme of things, and at the end of the, end of the day, you're going to realize that not only did you make it in spite of that, but in a lot of ways, you made it because of that, all right? So until next time, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this, this, this video session, and uh, I want to wish you guys a, a great day. And as always, we're trying to get better every day, right? We're trying to get better every day. Our mantra will always be better than yesterday. And so I, I sign off with that mantra. Uh, this is Coach Bobby saying BTY, better than yesterday. Take care.